Ngoi TV, informed economist and business perspective. Uh, thank you, Professor. I also thought that I uh, had a, a few things to just comment on from uh, the Professor's presentation and uh, also to say what we are doing about some of them. Uh, one of the issues that is rightly said was about uh, formalization of the informal sector and the proposal that uh, we should use carrot and stick, which is right, 3%. And uh, just to, like to update you on this, that what we are doing at the moment, we're already tackling that. And uh, the approach that we've taken is that uh, we're trying to formalize by going through a process where we encourage the informal sector, first of all, to identify themselves in groups of people, what the kind, the kind of things they are doing. And uh, as they identify them in groups, it helps us to ensure that we are talking to the right people. They have associations. And this has worked very well, very well, in that, uh, just give an example of career core, which has always been notorious, if you are aware of this. Uh, there have always been fights with Mugambo here and there, and so on and so forth. But through the associations, they have come together, say they be Wawuza Mitumba, uh, and so on and so forth, all the other groups. And there are about 3,000 in Kariyaku alone. Now, what we've done, we have a couple of government institutions that worked, are working together with us. We have NIDA, we have RITA. Uh, the first condition is, when you have a group or an association, you approach NIDA with your list of members. You have to get a national IED first. Because we need to know you. And the conditions to get to the national ID have to take you back to where you live because you have to give some, something to show where you live and so on and so we have to identify you. After that, you now come to TRA with your national ID through your association or your group. We provide you tax identification number. Therefore, you're registered. In addition to that, now we give you an ID. That ID lasts for three years. Now you probably identified through three different, uh, whatever, the national ID, tax identification number, and uh, uh, the, 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 the special ID for the informal sector. Now, uh, there was a comment that was given that uh, we should look at when we register the, 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 when we register them, we should straightly go and tax them. What we're doing is that, uh, the registration just means you get tax immediately. No, we're just identifying you. For those that are able to pay, they are paying at least according to the presumptive tax rates. But some are not paying anything. They're only contributing 10,000 shillings for the ID. The beauty about that also is that uh, the local government is allocating them places where to do businesses. Because there's been also a complaint from uh, the formalized businesses that some of them are doing business just outside their premises. So that's being sorted out by the local government. We are still working with the local government. So far we've launched Dar es Salaam, we've launched Morogoro, we've launched Arusha, we've launched Mwanza, and other regions are in the pipeline. And that's how we're trying to identify them. Uh, it would be amazing how uh, willing these people are. We've always known the informal sector to be sort of uh, uh, slippery, to be always waiting to fight, but they are complying, they are, co they are cooperating amazingly. So I just wanted to give that comment. And then the issue of, uh, uh, there was an issue Professor talked about, the budget has gone up, uh, the, the target for collection is going up, 1.5 and so on and so forth, and is wondering where we're going to get that money, it's a tall order, yes, it's a tall order, we have to get that money, and we have to get that money come what may. Let me give you just an example. No, please don't misunderstand that statement. Don't misunderstand that statement. To me, we're just going to ensure that we get from you uh, who are already doing business. Let me just correct that we get it clear and give you examples that are live. The reason that I'm saying that is that there is uh, quite a big chunk of businesses that are not registered. And I'll give you examples with the numbers. And the reason basically also is on our part. There are areas that we haven't reached people that are doing businesses. 
in this country. There are, there are so many of them. And some of them are even in the slum. If you just go around the slum here, there are so many people who are doing businesses that have never been registered and they've never paid anything. I'll give you a few examples of three regions. The campaign that we are running now, what we call Mkoa Kwa Mkoa. And we've done that by starting with the uh, regions that are newly established. We've done that in Geita, we've done that in Smiu, we've recently done that in Mjombe. And can you want to know the numbers that we've registered? Real businesses, not in the informal sector, real businesses. In Geita, we registered 608 in one week. In Simiu, we registered 1,197 in one week. In Njombe, we registered 664 in one week. Not in the informal sector, businesses. And the reason here is, there are some districts where we were not present. Geita, uh, Simiu, uh, Njombe, remember those were districts. There are some areas who had not been there before. People were doing businesses, but they were not paying anything. And when we got there, they were more than ready to come and register. They wanted to formalize themselves. And the beauty about it is that because now you can't get a business license without getting tax identification, it became a motivation for them to come and register, formalize so they can get their business license to do their businesses. And there are so many such businesses, even here in Dar es Salaam. That's just an example. But the other areas also, you mentioned about uh, strengthening, strengthening relationships. There are areas that we've not been doing very well. The relationship part of it, we've not been doing very well. And we're trying to do that much, much better. And I'll give a good example of the tourism sector, which we've tackled. We had a, a week-long meeting in Arusha with the tourism sector to understand their business. And they told us what they told us. And they even told us willingly the areas that were losing money, what we were doing wrong in that, in that sector. And they, there's an initiative that we're working together now that started yesterday uh, that's showing some good results where areas, some money was, there was a lot of leakage in some areas, but there was also things that we also had to do right so that we can work together. And it's bearing fruits. We believe that if we manage the relationship well, including not closing the shops or businesses, as we've promised, we'll not be closing shops or businesses anymore, except where somebody has gone to their next trip. There will be a fast warning, and so on and so forth. By the time we close your shop or business, you'll know that you've really been a very stubborn kind of person. So people will excuse on that. So we're trying to manage that as well. But I can assure you, and wait until maybe Monday or Tuesday, when you announce the collections for June, and you'll prove what I've just said. The numbers are impressive. Thank you. <coughs>